we've all done it, said we weren't going to get swept up into the holiday chaos only to end up with way too many gifts under the tree. And during my little break from YouTube, I started cleaning out every little cabinet, crevice, bin, and I was utterly shocked at the amount of small toys and gadgets we had accumulated, especially because if you've been here for a while, you know we moved literally seven times in a year and we've only been settled in our house for less than a year and a half. Let's get into the top five holiday shopping regrets I want to share with you guys. And these aren't in any particular order. First is going to be falling for sales that aren't really sales. I swear, I feel like this is the hundredth Amazon sales days this year. Over these last few years, I've bought stuff just outside of Black Friday or Deals Day and then gone back to see if it was cheaper during the Black Friday or sale, only to realize that it was either the exact same price or the price was actually higher during the sale. Yes, you heard me say that correctly. They marked the price higher during the sale than two days before the sale had happened and I had bought the thing. So I wanted to share a couple little tips for you within this whole idea of remembering that like just because something says it's a sale doesn't mean it's actually a sale. Number one, I remind myself that the sense of urgency can only come from within. It doesn't come from the people pushing Instagram stories or from the flood of sales emails from stores in your inbox. You can choose to step into what other people are pushing as the truth or you can choose to step into your own timeline that feels good for your nervous system and make choices at a slower pace but that you will most often regret less. At least that has been my personal experience. At the end of the day, there's always another sale happening. Now with that said, I do find that the best sales typically are the ones that just happened in October. I think they kind of set the tone for what the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals will be because it gives them an idea of like how much inventory they got off the shelf. But if you missed that, don't worry because there's always another sale and next year, maybe you just start planning a little bit earlier. I'm gonna talk more about that later. The other little tip I wanna share in, with regards to actual sales is unless that's like a I guess conglomerate, is that the right word? A syndication, like an Amazon, a Target, a Walmart where a bunch of sellers are coming together at the store. I will Google that store name and Black Friday sale history or that store name and sale history. And that gives me the chance to breathe and plan accordingly because a lot of times the sales are more or less the same. I've shared this in the past, Love Every generally for Black Friday, they do $30 off. It used to be a flat $30 off of a play kit. Now it's $10 off a commitment to three play kits. So a lot of times you can get a predictability factor for these smaller shops that are not selling a bunch of different retailers through them. I hope that makes sense. Like I said, I find that the best sales are the ones that happen in October. Yes, we just missed them. So how I really prep for that is by keeping a running list of things my kids are asking for starting roughly in June. And I find that the more they ask for that thing from June to October, the more likely they're still going to want it by the time Christmas rolls around. The second regret I have is focusing on each kid instead of the family. So last year I made a video about the five gift rule and you can go back and watch that. Basically it follows the idea of giving kids something they want, something they need, something to wear, something to read, and something to do. And last year our holidays got really out of hand. So my what we got our kids for Christmas last year video, you know we have three sets of very generous grandparents as well as a great grandma and they all really like to give gifts. For us it's very easy to go beyond that five gift rule. How I'm adapting it so it works for us without over overwhelming us is essentially each child got something they want, something to wear, and a book specific to a current growing pain or theme I've seen them struggle with this past year. After that, our do and need gifts become family gifts. So for us, that was like family ice cream maker. The kids both wanted a kitty surfboard, so we're going to get one for them to start out with. Getting consumables like chalk or new paint. And any surplus money goes into a family vacation fund. My third grade is getting overwhelmed with stuff for the sake of stuff. And what I mean by this is getting the stuff that was actually on sale, but it was just getting it because it was on sale and it was an interest my kids had. So like I was this close to buying this car wash Lego Duplo toy for my son because he loves car washes. But as I was cleaning out every crevice of our home, I had to pause and really realize how getting overwhelmed with this stuff for the sake of stuff happened 
happens. And that's usually by getting these like little interest-based toys that your kids are super into for a moment but are actually really hard to store, have to be kept together and inevitably like break or the Legos get mixed in with other pieces. And so how I'm really like fighting this urge to get swept up in the idea that my kid's gonna love this toy is by pausing and asking where this item will get stored in our home. So in the past playroom tours and cleanup videos I've done, I always preach everything in your house should have a home and everybody in your home should know where that thing's home is. So before adding a gift to the list, I make sure I know exactly how we'll store it and care for it when not in use. If it doesn't fit into our current toy storage system, it's getting next from the list, no matter how cute and how fun it is. The fourth regret is not having kids donate or give for birthdays or holidays. I started having my oldest go through all of her toys as part of a process for making her wish list. And while she was going through her toys, I asked her to get rid of any broken items, to sort things back into a proper home, and to create a donation pile before asking to bring new things in. I found that before we started doing this process, the kids really lacked an understanding of what it means to bring new things into an environment because they would have to find a home so like I used to not be like a Lego mom and I told my daughter if she wanted to bring them in then she needed to clear space and know exactly where she was going to store and house them. It also really stretches the importance of giving back to the community which my oldest started bagging groceries and donations during the holidays last year and this year my youngest gets to start helping. Their school went and was bagging stuff for hurricane relief. I think it's just really important for them to focus during this time of I want I want, I want on what's going on with others and what the longer term impacts of I want, I want are. And the last regret is not stocking up on gifts for the year ahead while things are actually on a sale. While I started off this video saying that not all sales are actually sales and there's always another sale around the corner, I do like to use this time of year as kind of like a reset button to restock supplies that have gotten low or things I know I will be giving out throughout the year. So my oldest is really big on celebrating every birthday and every accomplishment for others. We joke she really is like the world's biggest cheerleader and it's something that both my husband and I really love about her and want to encourage and foster because it reminds me of this thing I once read that basically said people who have a lot of people that care about them, it's not everyone just suddenly decided to care about this one person. It's usually because those people have cared about other people. My daughter really embodies that and lives that and inspires us with that. And we just love how she puts her heart out there with no care about whether or not somebody's going to do anything for her in return. The act of giving gifts is never transactional for her. It's just pure excitement and love of others. And so on a story family here, I like to have a prepared environment for when she comes home and says it's so-and-so's birthday tomorrow. So typically I like to keep a closet full of like little Lego packs or activity books and party favors that are interest-based. And if she comes home telling me that so-and-so's birthday tomorrow we can pull something out and make a little goodie bag for them. We live in a small town the nearest Target is 30 minutes away the nearest Whole Foods is an hour so having kind of just like a closet stocked up because we can't just run out to the store real quick is important to me. I also do have her pay me a portion of money for buying the gift from my store in the closet. So my general rule of thumb for tackling this is I buy a handful or two of small toys usually like Lego packs that are under $10 and I try to base what I buy on the kids in her class. I also try to restock consumables like mini play-dohs or bubbles so these are little add-ons that we can use last minute for flying at home or as a travel toy for my kids or if I run out of Legos or something like that we can kind of build a little goodie bag or basket. Whistles and mini flashlights are also really good here too. Now with all that said let me know in the comments below what type of gift guides you guys want this year. I do you have some really cool ones in the works reviewing some toys that you guys have asked about in the past. If there are specific toys you have questions about or want feedback on, feel free to drop them in the comments as well. In the meantime, be sure to go back and check out my past gift guides, especially for little
girls under the age of three. My recommendations rarely change. My blog also has a holiday page on it. I'll link in the description box below, which has tons of buying guides. So if you're shopping for a pregnant person, I have like some maternity leggings, the best nursing bras, all of that stuff. If you're shopping for babies or families, I have a ton of stuff on that holiday page. Be sure to go ahead and check that out because it supports me and my family and we're so appreciative of you guys and happy holidays.